Good morning, everyone. This is Honeywell, and I'm playing Banished. We're on episode four of The Perfect Town. And when we last left off, we were waiting to expand into these four houses over here. And I said we were going to get our trading post up and running. And we're going to do all that. Well, that and much, much more. Because it's been a few days since I've played Banished, and I have all morning to play and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, let's go ahead and get one of these houses unpaused. We'll increase the priority on it. Let's pick up the speed of uh, a tad. I'm going to double check to make sure I'm remembering right. Okay, we do need another house. And let's be crazy and unpause all of these houses. Yeah, not really. Uh, really, I just want the materials brought over to them. Then I'll go ahead and repause them, and they'll be built quicker when I finally get around to it. Um, we don't have much to work with right now. And I have a lot of plans. So, this phase of the game is really all about uh, controlled expansion. They're not doing what I want them to do. I said this house. Build this one. Thank you. Uh, it's really about a uh, controlled expansion. I have a lot of plans. For the game, but I don't have the population, um to make that happen yet. So while we wait for our population to grow, we'll get started on all of these projects that I have. And I'm going to let this market placement uh, dictate sort of my expansion. I have no particular order that I want anything done in right this second. Um, our town is up, it's running, and there's no need for expansion. And this is actually um, part of the game where you can where you can kind of get yourself into trouble if you don't start expanding. Because everything is going so nice, um, it's tempting to to just leave it like that and kind of sit back and enjoy your game. I mean, it's a beautiful game. I could watch this all day. Um, but you want to start expanding so you don't run into uh, population problems later. Or food issues. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, my food is, I keep my food low. Well, I keep my food low for right now. And that's only because I have the capacity to increase my food production at a moment's notice. If you'll see here, I only have four gatherers on and three hunters. But I have the infrastructure in place where I could uh, quickly almost double my, my food income. Now, if I was relying on crops, that wouldn't be something that I would be able to do because crops take a year to grow, so that's something that you have to uh, plan in, in advance. But since we started out with a a forester hub set up with the hunters and gatherers. Um, I have a lot more more free free laborers to kind of uh, push and pull wherever I want or wherever I need them. Uh, 
Okay. Let's see. We'll go ahead and... Oh, let's be crazy. You'll be 2,000. We'll go ahead and... Upper logs to 1,500. And I believe I reset these limits over here. I have enough... Uh, labor force to keep these buildings fully staffed, so I'm going to let them naturally re reach their limits, which I've raised back up to the starting um, 50. And then once they do that, they can um, they'll help out with the labor force. But I'm not going to to artificially micromanage that the way I have been doing. Um, I enjoy kind of the the hard start and goal that I gave myself to get the um, schoolhouse built first. But not forever. It's uh, nice to switch things up a bit. Okay, we're getting a fishing dock set up over here. And you'll notice that um, this is a pretty nice fishing dock, and this is going to produce a lot of food for us. It has good water coverage. There's a storage barn right near by, and we have two close houses that are also right nearby. That is something when I was uh, building building the forester hubs I said that the most important thing that you could do um, was have storage close by and housing was secondary and that's true but stationary workplaces like the the fishing dock get more benefit from close housing than say your hunter cabin where your hunter is wandering all over the place. I mean, for all you know, your hunter might need to go back to his home to get warm or get food while he's uh, right next to his house. Or he could be across the map and it could be a long trek. But with a stationary building like a fishing, fishing dock, um, the trip to the home, to the workplace, is always short. So they get the maximum benefit from that. If you go ahead and you have your fishing dock and two houses close by uh, on a reasonable patch of water, you're going to produce a lot of fish from these. You're going to have more fish than you know what to do with. Um, yes. Great. Um... What else we're doing? Let's get some farmhouses over here. Okay, and let's get one of these houses unpaused. And we'll get another forester and another hunter. Okay, yeah, there's a forester, a hunter. Hunter, Forester. Okay, that works. Um, what I'm doing with here is I want to make sure that as I expand, I'm not going to be um, 
uh, splitting up families. If you build your houses uh, too fast, you'll have like single adults moving out with their children. And I don't know for a fact that it hurts your, your growth rate, but I think it's reasonable to assume that it might impact it a bit. So I like to, especially in the, the early stages here, um, you'll see me micromanage. The population like that. What else do we need here? Did we already need another? We do. Crazy times. And we're getting resource low messages. That's okay. I don't care. And our pile of things to build over here is growing and growing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, our market is ready, and I'm not ready for it, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off, and it'll act as a storage barn. again with the houses. Let's see, what else are we doing over here? Oh, the reserve of logs is low. Thank you for letting me know that. Finally, go ahead and clear out the resources in our forests. The foresters will again eventually get to it, but we can speed that process along. Our gatherers and hunters will produce more food if we do that. Let's do another housing check to make sure I'm not falling behind here. I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually... I'm a terrible Let's Player. Because I find it hard to play and talk at the same time. But I'm so enthusiastic about this game that I wanted to share. And it also keeps the game doing this, actually, uh, kind of renewed my interest, renewed my interest in the, in the game, too. So, I'm getting something out of it as well. See 
who moves in here. Ah, uh, see, now that's exactly what I'm talking about. We're going to go ahead and, when I pause the game, um, if you build your houses too, too quickly, this is the situation that you can end up with. And I don't want that. But I could have swore I had another laborer. I guess not. What I'm going to go ahead and do is... Upgrade this for a... Stone house. This family will move back in together. And we'll wait until I actually get a laborer. Which I do have. Let's reclaim this. And see if the game doesn't do a better job of filling this house. That's better. Okay, so now we have a, a, a new couple. A new young couple in that house. And... Do I need any more? Not for right now. For right now we're good. Oh, we have that full. Let's go ahead and close that out. Where are these houses? We're gonna up the priority on these just so I can get them off my radar. Clogging up my screen, confusing me. If one trading post is good, four must be better, right? Right. These I am going to go ahead and pause. can wait. Yeah, what else do we have going on here? Ah, let's do some more crop fields. What I'm doing right now might have been an issue uh, for the early, early days of Banished, when you had marches of death. Which there were two types of, of death marches. One, where you accidentally um, click to an inaccessible area. And another where you had work where you queued up work so far away from the laborer's house they would starve or freeze to death on their way to or home from doing that work. that one right there. As you can see, I'm getting confused now. Um, but that's been patched out. And that is no longer a concern. So there's... I don't have any... any hesitation to queue up a... a, a large group of buildings like this or stone collection all the way over here, which, hey, let's do that. Let's pause that. And... Let's 
let's help them out a little bit by putting a couple stockpiles in here. Now this would just make the resource gathering go a little quicker. They might be able to get more done before they need to head home if there's a stockpile right nearby. Or that's the theory anyway. I've never tested it. It just makes sense, so I do it. When I remember to. Oops. Oops. Get those closed. Good, good, you moved in. And we have a grand total of six laborers. Very nice. Okay, we're good for a while here. Got crop field done. increase priority on this. Actually, let's increase priority on our trading post. We get that up and running, filled with some goods, and then we'll have a chance of uh, getting some traders, which are fun. It's like Christmas. And also, I think Amarich's 15 minutes of uh, fame is up here. Um, I think at the beginning of the episode, he was actually a blacksmith. And if I wasn't taking him out of that position, there's not going to be any reason. There's not going to be any position that I'm going to take him out of. I'm going to go ahead and um, assign this woodcutter over here and get a few more foresters in our huts here. We have a lot of building projects and I want the wood and I want the fire the firewood. Um what are we doing over here? Oh, we're waiting for iron. Okay, let's increase the priority. Let's increase the priority on some iron here. Come here, please. Student, student, laborer. Okay, this house that almost got built, come finish that because it's bothering me. Usually I would expand into a closer house because a student is going to end up going into this house and I uh, don't want them too far away from the schoolhouse, but honestly, it's not going to make any difference. And that's true for a lot of uh, what I do. The main things that are important for your town are putting your buildings in a good location so they can do the job they're intended to do. Um, for instance, you want a woodcutter next to a stockpile filled with wood. How you fill that stockpile with wood is up to you. You can go ahead and do it with a forester like I have here. You can put your, your wood cutter next to your market and let the, the vendors in your market supply your wood cutter with wood. That's another strategy. 
Uh, a third strategy is you can uh, put your woodcutters next to your trading docks and let your trading docks um, either purchase logs from the merchant or you can fill up your trading dock inventory with logs and say go gather me 500 logs and you'll let your vendors run out to your uh, forest and your far-flung stockpiles pick up the wood and bring it back and then you can release it into a nearby stockpile so there's a lot of ways of going about going about that and that's down to personal preference but what isn't down to personal preference is for your woodcutter to do a good job they need to be near a stockpile that's filled with wood um, for your gatherers huts to be effective they need to be in a forested area and they need to have a storage barn and homes reasonably close by um, our population is very small and you'll already see a storage barn here a storage barn here a storage barn here a storage cart here uh, we need a storage barn here Let's queue that up. Oh, and I must have stopped talking here. Um, Emerich has served his purpose. He's our one uneducated worker, um, but we don't need to keep tabs on him any longer. He cannot hurt our town in any way by underperforming, so goodbye. Do a labor check again. And we seem to be good for the time being. Oh, here's a biggie. Um, something we can talk about crop sizes there is a lot everybody has a theory on the optimal crop sizes and all I'm going to say is crop sizes are determined by crops are determined crop yield is determined by uh, the number of tiles the more area that you have covered in farms, the more food you're going to produce. So, I make the largest crop field sizes. And put assign how many labors I want to those um, fields the same way that I do with my gatherers hut where I only have two gatherers because that's all the labor that I want to spend on food production I treat the crop fields the same way and that's just the way I do it um, I've actually looked at the numbers or looked at the game files to see how how these worked um, and I did some in in game testing myself to be sure that I wasn't misunderstanding what was happening now if you have a, a food situation and that's why you're trying to figure out the the best crop size um, my answer to that is it's probably not the crop field size causing your food issue. The first thing you want to do is make sure do you have storage nearby? Do you have housing nearby? If you have those two things covered, your crop, you're not going to get a lot of benefit from changing your crop field size. You're not going to get more food if if you have a problem where 
half of your field isn't being harvested and you have a barn nearby in close housing, um, the next best thing is to check to see what crops to, you're growing if you don't have enough laborers available to fully work the field. Um, beans would be your go-to in that situation because beans grow the fastest. So a smaller number of workers can get a full harvest of, of beans in before time runs out. So if you're running into problems with your, your crop fields, um, check to make sure that you have the infrastructure needed, um, barns and houses, and then put however many workers you have available to work them. If And if the total number is a real concern, you can try upping, changing the crop, and that sort of thing. And that's all I have to say about crop fields. I'll link to a, a mini fact sheet on crops and whatnot, so you can go ahead and, and take a look at that if you want. Um, and I'll explain the, the theory behind the um, ideal, the one man farm, ideal 11 by 11 setup um, that's popular. And you can do that. That's a perfectly fine way to go about covering your map in farms is with 11 by 11 farms. That's okay. It's just not what I do and I question whether or not you'll get a lot of benefit from it. What's going on with my trading post? Do you know what? We need another builder. One of the reasons why I have my um, wood cutting cranked up so high is is to stock my trading posts. Now this isn't, I'm not going to always trade firewood. Or always have firewood be my primary, uh, primary trade, trade good, but in the early game, firewood and venison is where it's at in my opinion. Again, lots of different ways to go about this. And we're going to go ahead and stock 600, no. We're going to go ahead and stock uh, 1250 firewood just because. And a thousand venison. We're going to go ahead and assign one trader here. Now with, with the 1,250 firewood, the reason why I'm stocking the firewood in increments of 625 is because 625 firewood will buy one uh, seed. And it'll buy a fair amount of livestock as well. So it's just a good amount. But you can do whatever you like. Okay, where are we at? Oh, another crop field. Let's do a housing check. Not yet. Two, three, okay. And Laman, a miracle, and Kelvis just became the new uh, family to take up the Amarich's spot down here. Uh, basically, I'm keeping an eye on this three-year-old. When 
the three-year-old reaches uh, school age, I'm going to go ahead and staff this schoolhouse that we're working on. And place priority on that bridge so I can uh, get across the, the river. And we'll start developing our livestock pastures. Our little tiny grave. Year eight. I would be expecting a death relatively soon. And we're gonna make that, no, five times speed is good, I think. I don't want the, the game speed to go um, too fast so I miss something while I'm blabbing away here because that would be embarrassing. Okay, yay, bridge. And again, with the straight roads and kind of outlining the mountains is something that I like to do. But it's not necessary at all. You can have uh, jagged, jagged roads with lots of character. And they're just as good. Uh, laborers? Am I seeing laborers? Well, let's do a check. A forester. Uh, over here, please. Thank you. The reason why I'm unpausing that is because I want to get a, a few fishermen working. Um, I've, as you just saw, I stocked the... Uh, do I have? Okay. I stock the trading post with a thousand venison, and venison is the only source of meat that we have right now, so I don't want their diets to be deficient because I am not crop fields. Because I am going to be trading venison. And so we want to replace that with with fish. Um, skip on that. Faster. Work faster. Cannot see a darn thing. And again with the tunnels that will be paused. Okay. Great. And would you look at that? Why don't you be fishermen? and we're ready for another house and uh, let's go over here And that will give our trader a place to live. 
that is the closest he's going to get for for a little while yet. And our storage barn. Did we really finish everything over here already? Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, um, pasture, pasture, mm. stockpile, no stockpile, bed, bed. I have a bad habit of pausing the game. Okay, very nice. Do another check. Make sure we're expanding as fast as we can. And we're good for the next little while. Please don't tell me I have people doing these roads. Because I do not want that. Okay. Back to pastures. And would you look at that? It fits. It's almost like I planned this out. Which of course I did. And we'll get a bridge. And of course, my fineness for storage barns can never have enough. But one is good to start with. And again, we have a, um, a fishing dock. has that is covering a reasonable portion of water not the ideal placement if you look at this dock um, this dock clearly it has more water in its range so I expect this one to perform better and I've also read but haven't actually tested it out myself that um, bridges and trading posts also interfere with the amount of water available for the fishermen to work with. But this stock will still bring in a lot of fish for us and it will be worthwhile. And once the town gets up and running, we'll go ahead and go around to the various buildings and, and compare them so you can kind of see what's going on and what kind of yields you can expect. Okay, more buildings. Let's get some houses.
And it's almost time to plop a, a teacher in there. Let's see how everyone else is doing. What is that? 40, 53 people. Wow. That's a lot of people. Okay, and we are ready for a house. So... Let's do this one. Let's fill in some of these houses before we start venturing across the river there. And how did our trader make out? Oh, he still needs to go get the venison. Could hurry that up a bit. Very nice. Our wood is is more than adequate. Okay. Everything what did you do? Pause the game. Hold on. This is not acceptable. The 27-year-old tailor and the 8-year-old child is not who I want living in that house. Let's reclaim and give the game a chance to do this again. Maybe they'll do it better. Ah, that is good, thank you. Where did that... Let's just plop this teacher in here. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, this was the family that that I broke up. Okay, the schoolhouse is staffed, so when the seven and eight year olds grow up, they'll attend this school, which is much closer to their homes, and maybe they'll graduate a fraction sooner than if they had to travel all the way down to this schoolhouse. Um, I'm aware that these schoolhouses can hold uh, 20 students, but just like I wouldn't build this fishing dock down here and let them use this barn way up here, I'm not going to let the people who live in this house um, go to this school. And as a bonus um, to doing it this way, this also provides some um, um, some protection. If a tornado were to come through right now and wipe out my schoolhouse, um, the students that aren't attending down here, <laughs> uh, but when they do, they would move automatically transfer up to this schoolhouse. So that's a little benefit too. And we need more houses. You, you're up next. Let's get that off our screen. Okay, it's going pretty good. Our town is expanding nicely and... And by the time we have the, the labor needed to um, the labor and the trade goods uh, to to start staffing these buildings. Uh, everything's going to be in place for them, which is nice. And our fishermen have split off here. We'll look at them next year just to see how they're doing. Although, again, because I'm building so heavily, actually, don't work this shit. There's no houses over there. Duh. Um, but because I'm building so heavily, the, the jobs are constantly changing. Um, so it's not a good, a good indication of what you can expect from each of these buildings. But just for fun. Oh. 
open these up and let you get a look at what we're doing. Our Forester. I would expect this to eventually be around 300 logs. And they're cutting uh, about a thousand a year, which is what I expect. Um, both of their productions could be lower because um, the stockpile is full. And the stockpile is full because my builders are not building these trading posts fast enough. Yes, that is the story. I will blame it on them, not me. And this, oh, we just got the new season. And even this fire, this woodcutter is uh, doing about 900 and this forester 250 uh, this gatherer's hut you can see and this hunting cabin there's the stockpile I have eight people probably need another house Did I miss the first death? I must have. Is there somebody in this graveyard? Yeah, I missed it. Uh, sorry about that. You died. Not Jalon- oh, okay, Jalonzo is still alive. Jalonzo was our first student! Our second trading post is up. So let's get the 1250 and another thousand venison in there and then we'll go see what this guy has for us um yeah not very exciting uh but it's good and we'll go ahead and trade our venison here uh for more food 111 venison will magically turn into 333 corn corn and since corn is a grain, something that our town has never had, this should uh, help their health as well. So I'm happy with that. But I don't want to ever buy mutton. So I'm going to train, train Maybellin, the food merchant here, and tell her exactly what I want her to bring. Uh, she can bring apples, beans, Cabbage, cherries, chestnuts, corn, peaches, pears, pecans, peppers, plums, potatoes, pumpkins, squash, walnut, and wheat. I don't want her to bring any of the higher um, cost foods, the venison or the eggs, and I don't want her to bring mushrooms because their weight is is they take up more room than any other food item and I will have so many gathering huts and forests that will be swimming in berries uh, onions and roots so I don't want those either and every visit okay so she can bring us uh, whatever else she wants outside of those things and where is why why oh why do they keep assigning these people like this Let's get them out of there reclaim it and give the game a chance to uh, to reassign a suitable couple uh, this is why I leave the the house house is pinned when I'm um, building them because I don't want I don't want my families broken up and it's also a good later on when I'm not being so anal about uh, expanding the houses and the, the people later on it'll let me know if I'm leaving it too late building my houses as uh, my citizens start to get into their 20s and 30s moving into houses then then I know that I'm not keeping up with my population. And again, if they're too young, if there's too many students, 
uh, then I know that... Oh, I had the game paused, duh. That's why this house wasn't filling in. Then I know that... I'm expanding too quickly. Which might be what happened here. It's possible these were. this was one of the houses that should have been paused, and because I was busy messing around with the trader, I didn't get to that. Just like I didn't assign anyone to that job. Okay, that's better. A laborer and a student, that is good. Uh, we have a few people attending this schoolhouse now. I don't know. I think we, uh, I think we're doing a pretty good job here. We have two trading posts up and going. Um, crop fields ready. Let's unpause that tunnel. How could I forget about the tunnel? And we're getting our pastures. Okay, thank you. And because we have, here's also something that I need to take into consideration. Because I'm starting to have um, our older citizens die off, I want to keep in mind that these houses are uh, going to empty out and I'll have people moving into them. So I want to be careful, a little bit careful with that. Is definitely not the end of the world if someone moves into a house too quickly, I can let it go or I could do what I've been doing, which is setting it to either upgrade or remove and letting the the game rehouse the, the house. And the hunter has died. Sorry about that. So we have Ali, and uh, why are the women dying in this town? I think thought it should be the other way around. Women live longer than men. Okay, I can go ahead and work this fishing dock now that there is a house and somebody over here to actually do that. And. fishermen. And let's see who moves in here. And there's our tunnel. Very nice. Oh no. Our first childbirth death. Your citizens have an increased chance of dying in childbirth, um, dependent on their health as well. There's always a chance, but poor health exasperates it, as expected. And I think this is a good a good stopping place. Um, we have some trade docks set up. We've received a merchant. Um, we have this side of the river mostly filled in. And when we pick up again, we'll continue to expand over here and expand our trading and maybe get some stone intensive buildings like the town hall and eat away at our uh, stockpile of stone okay thank you for watching
and I'll see you next time.